Good afternoon. Thank you all today for joining us for our health and safety webinar. We're very fortunate today to have with us Azka Sinai as our speaker. Azka is a health and safety expert. She works with HR departments to understand their health and safety needs, guide them on the newest trends and best practices, and help them automate and manage their health and safety tracking and reporting. She's here today to talk to you about the latest trends, how automating um, and reduce that, <clears throat> excuse me, um, how automating your systems can reduce your claim costs and improve your corrective actions processing, as well as improving your compliance and reporting. And then she's gonna show you what an integrated automated safety solution can look like for your organization. You can ask questions in the chat and we're gonna to try to answer them throughout or if not at the end. We will be recording the session, please note that, and then we will have it available on our archives for you to peruse and we're also going to email it out to all the participants. So again, thank you very much for joining us and without further ado, let's welcome Azka. Thanks so much for that introduction, Jennifer. And uh, hello everyone, welcome to the Enterprise Health Safety and Environmental Management Solution demonstration today. Um, this solution is hosted on a secure SAP cloud platform and it is available on the SAP App Center for purchasing. Um, again, as Jennifer mentioned, uh, my name is Askis and I, um, I'm a glo global deployment lead and customer success lead here at Sedalis. Um, and um, Sedalis has been partnering with HR strategies for the past three years. We've been doing implementations and innovations, uh, especially with some of our customers within the college, um, uh, university, and uh, senior home care uh, space. Um, so Dallas as a company is an award-winning um, um, uh, uh, company. We have uh, won the SAP Pinnacle Awards, uh, Partner of the Year for uh, ISV Award for um, our innovations and cutting-edge solutions. Two of our top-selling products um, include the Enterprise Health and Safety Solution as well as the Labor Relations product. Uh, now, we have a lot of global presence. Uh, mostly, we specialize in regulated industries. Some of the uh, uh, reference customers that we have are within the public sector, utilities, manufacturing, construction, um, healthcare, education, and also food companies. So, um, for our um, our applications, what we bring to the table is uh, that um, uh, the ability to identify any type of nonconformities, whether they're related to labor relations or health and safety um, systems uh, and processes, and uh, in order to avoid those claims, in order to avoid avoid those costs associated with union claims or uh, health and safety claims. Uh, we're able to automate processes and stay compliant with any type of company policies or regulatory procedures. Uh, for highly regulated industries, it is critical to have best in class security. Um, so we do support that. We support encryption of your data. And, um, and, and that's just um, is, is, that's is, is one aspect of it. So we're going to be looking at um, all of those needs, as well as how you can integrate your business processes with all of your other core systems. So we're not looking at just data level improvement, but also process level improvement. So when it comes to health and safety, and as you're identifying those corrective actions and identifying those nonconformances, or looking at health and safety related disciplines, you could be talking to several other systems. You have a single point of entry, you have a centralized platform, whether you want to talk to your performance system, whether you want to drive, uh, a, a have seamless integration with learning management, whether you want to take those costs associated with these incidents and talk to the finance system, uh, look at your employee succession planning. Um, uh, the system is fully integrated with all your core business processes. Um, and that's something that we'll be talking about um, in the presentation today. Now, uh, the great thing about the tool, especially recently in the past couple of months with the global pandemic, uh, we've seen customers reach out to us with an urgent timeline. Now, the great thing is if you're buying the, if you're purchasing off the shelf product, uh, the minimum deployment time is three weeks. And the greatest thing is no prerequisites needed for that. So you, you can deploy the, the product as a standalone 
um, and uh, you do not require any IT support. Um, and you, you could do that initial deployment within three weeks. And then after that, you could look at the further um, uh, enhancements as uh, uh, within the increments. So safety is becoming essential for all businesses, especially in the current unprecedented times that we're going through. Um, it's becoming the responsibility of everybody in the organization, not just the management, but also the employees as well. Now here I've displayed some stats for you to take a look at. As you can see, 2.2 trillion annual loss cases in the United States alone related to health and safety, workplace health and safety incidents. The reason this number is this high is because companies are still treating health and safety as a silo process. Now, what is being required of our customers? As I mentioned, we're not just looking at data level improvements. We need to be able to understand how we can have a centralized system, how we can have that process level improvement. Here are some of the latest uh, uh, line of business trends that we are looking at, that we are improving from time to time. Uh, we're looking at the industry specific innovations. Uh, so first off, as I mentioned, um, we've seen a spike in the need to have health and safety processes in place as workers are returning back to work, um, as uh, we need to activate the return to work plans, as we need to file for claims if employees are having to take time away from work. Um, so we need to have these processes in place. The second one you're seeing here is being able to adapt to changing needs. So. Uh, you could have your company policies that are changing from time to time on an ongoing basis. You could have your uh, regulatory needs that are changing, especially with uh, uh, the current health crisis. There's, there's changing policies um, uh, throughout the year, and we need the ability to have flexible tools to adapt, flexible tools with inexpensive lead times uh, to change those rules without having to reach out to us without having to reach out to a vendor um, to touch any code or talk to a developer. You have the ability, you have the control uh, um, through some administrative capabilities to change these rules. And then there's regulatory compliance and not just re regulatory compliance, but digitization of compliance. And that includes, um, uh, you know, it, it's, it's becoming critical for uh, to have this information available in real time so if you want to generate OSHA reports, whether it's OSHA 300 forms, OSHA 300A forms, um, whether it's WSIB or WCB compliance, um, based on the region that you're in or uh, compliance with ADA guidelines, um, we fulfill all of those regulatory needs as well. And then finally, when we think of health and safety, we think of compliance, but the latest industry trend is to engage your employees in the corporate safe corporate work culture as well. So how do we do that? We want to engage our employees um, in uh, participating in the corporate health, uh, health and safety work culture. And we do that by encouraging them to identify any hazards within the workplace in order to take any of those trainings, take the initiative to go and take those trainings um, to increase their own knowledge and participate in the programs. And uh, the way that we do that is by offering them, the way that we motivate that, uh, them and give them incentive is by offering them recognition and rewards program. And this is gonna encourage our supervisors as well as our employees to have um, a zero or, or an accident-free uh, work zone. And then finally, there's analytics in collaboration with preventative measures. So this is where you leverage that intelligent technology to look at those algorithms, to look at, to generate those reports and look at, capture that data that helps us uh, make improvements in our processes. So another thing, um, another um, innovation that we have recently made this year, obviously related to COVID-19. So the first thing we cover is prevention. And the way that we do that is, um, some of our companies are uh, looking at some employees that are coming into work. They're doing temperature readings. They're asking them a basic set of questions. Uh, so we enable forms um, or 
um, the applications are device agnostic. So you could basically uh, place a person at the entrance of your building um, who could be asking these basic questions upon entry. And if anybody has symptoms or if anybody seems to be um, a suspect case, um, you could be denying entry uh, at that point early on. Um, the ability to log uh, your employees' test results uh, within the system, and also being able to push out any new procedures and instructions that you want to provide to your employees um, in order to practice um, uh, social distancing or follow those SOPs. Um, so you would have the ability to push out those documents to the employee right from the system. The second area we're looking at is transmission. So we do allow the employees, um, or we have enabled um, the capability to go in on a daily basis and track who are the people that you have been in contact with. Um, today, I've been in contact with um, th three employees at the following location. Um, and then you could also capture the details of people who are not employees in the company um, and update their, their uh, email address or their contact details, um, just so in case you need to follow up with those people in the future. And what that is doing is if anybody happens to be a confirmed case of COVID, then we allow a traceability matrix, which can help us uh, identify all those people that have been in contact with this person in the past couple of days and immediately isolate them for a period of 14 days. So we can notify those people and we can also track down the location which was exposed. We can perform investigations accordingly. We can perform follow up on steps accordingly. And then finally, uh, there is the ability to identify symptoms. So uh, encouraging the employees uh, to go into the system and identify their, uh, their symptoms if they start to experience them, identify the date that the symptoms started to occur, and also um, um, uh, allowing them to request for time off or request for claims um, as per those, um, uh, the occurrence of those, those symptoms. Now, what are some of the business challenges that we are accomplishing here? So first off, um, we provide a secure um, external collaborative system. And what that means is you're collaborating with your HR, you're collaborating with the operations teams, you're collaborating with the safety teams, your, your, um, uh, your supervisors, your employees, and not just that, but if you have any external uh, contacts, any external employees, maybe some subcontractors, maybe there is um, external workers' compensation teams or insurance uh, um, external bodies that you need to interact with who are not part of your core HR, but you do need them to have access into the system. We do provide uh, an external third party, a uh, third port uh, party portal access for them. Um, with the ability to update their contact details as well. And then there's lack of adequate reporting. So it is important to have um, the right reports available. And that is to loop um, that uh, or measure the effectiveness of all of your safety programs. And then use that as a 360 degree loop to bridge the gap between your health and safety um, of the organization and see how that is being adopted by your, by your employees and your workers. Then there's the centralized system for best practices. So um, what we have done as a company, we have visited our customers' job sites. We've really studied their business processes, seen how they've performed their day-to-day -day tasks, how did, how did they perform their health and safety, and what we bring to the table is not just the capabilities of the solution, but also the best practices, the recommendations, um, the pre-built business content, the business process flows. And it is fully integrated with your, with your core systems. So you're, as you're, you're uh, enabling these capabilities, you're doing that in context of the processes. Finally, the inability to effectively resolve corrective actions. Now, because we use a big data model, what this does is it gives you full insight to action across any processes. So if I'm generating any corrective actions and, and the system sees that there's constantly being, there's this particular corrective action which is constantly being generated, uh, the system has the ability to generate trigger events, 
to generate outputs, there's APIs, it's interacting with your other systems, and what it can do is it could flag that corrective action so that the next time a policy update is taking place or a meeting is taking place within the management, that corrective action is flagged and they can take a look at and have those discussions and update those company policies. So uh, doing that and also having a dashboard available, uh, uh, driving those notifications, those reminders, escalating any corrective actions that are overdue uh, and no action has taken place, escalating that to the next person in the company hierarchy. Then there's overwhelming documentation and legal compliance. So being able to push those, documentation, uh, those documents to different groups in the company um, filtering down those groups using criteria um, and using legal compliance. Um, uh, if there's any uh, legal updates that are taking place, then uh, we have the ability to go into the system, give the administrative user the ability to go into the system and make updates to those policy documents um, or legal documents and update those systems and uh, uh, push them out to those groups. And then there's disparate tools for incidents, inspections, and audits. Um, a lot of companies have been managing these processes manually. Um, information, once it's been, uh, these paper forms have been taken to the administrative teams, the information has been lost in translation. Sometimes the reports don't turn out to be accurate. So having that automated set of data in real time um, and uh, also enabling the ability for, so let's say we have workers, and this is a common challenge that companies have. There are workers who are uh, resistant towards the new technology that we are offering. So we can uh, give them the ability to stick to their old processes. If they wanna fill out a paper form, that's totally fine. They can fill out a paper form. And we do provide OCR capabilities where we could just take a picture of that paper form and that's gonna capture the text from it into an image and load it into the system. So being able to fulfill all of those, um, uh, those needs as well. So here's why we're different. Um, I did highlight on all, uh, most of these um, in the previous slides, but having those flexible administrative tools, um, uh, updating those rules in a, uh, in a short period of time or, or actually uh, in real time um, uh, without uh, any expensive lead times. Um, looking at your best practices, looking at your content, staying compliant with all your regulatory procedures. So how do you perform your investigations within your company, whether you do that uh, using the five whys analysis, there's different root cause templates that we can offer, there's the fishbone analysis, there's the SCAT analysis, there's the DNB analysis, um, doing collaboration with different um, uh, uh, parties within your company, as well as external bodies. Um, and then obviously the preventability, the, the, the proactive approach. So our system is also looking at previous similar incidents. Uh, we can use past precedents to look at previous incidents and how, uh, what were the final results of those previous incidents so that we can stay consistent with our previous uh, decisions as well um, and also deliver preventability. Now here I have highlighted some of the key components of the solution. I like to split my uh, health and safety into two portions. There is a reactive approach to health and safety, and then there's a proactive approach to health and safety. So the reactive approach covers when an incident has already taken place and how you go into the system and you file the details of that incident, whether it's injuries, illnesses, um, whether it's, um, it, it could be psychological uh, um, uh, events that we are also capturing. We do have an employee assistance program to look at psychological risks if your employees are going through emotional distress or if they're going through uh, depression, uh, being able to do assessments on those employees. And if there is a critical case, uh, maybe a case of suicide, then you can also uh, refer those employees to external uh, locations. So all of that process is end-to-end is, uh, -end being covered through the tool. COVID traceability, as I talked about earlier, um, being able to manage any type of uh, claims, short-term disabilities, long-term disabilities based on the employee's incidents, performing the root cause analysis and investigations and generating action plans for those, uh, for those uh, uh, root causes. 
Um, and then finally, activating a return to work plan for those employees when they're ready to come back to work once they have recovered. So all of that is part of, of our uh, incident management um, reactive approach. And obviously all this data that is being captured is available in reports. And we, we have dashboard reports, we have the standard embedded reports. We also support ad hoc reporting capabilities for somebody who's creating dynamic reports um, on a day-to-day -day basis, who's in Excel a lot. So they have the ability to uh, create those reports through the tool uh, as well. And then obviously there's the, the uh, uh, regulatory re reports, which are OSHA or WSIB, you can generate all those outputs. So that is our reactive approach. Now over to the left-hand side, you can see the preventative safety measures. So that includes anything from uh, scheduling your site audits, um, uh, making sure you're having quality check checks, you're doing your inspections, evaluations, um, and as you're identifying any non-conformities when you're performing these evaluations, um, generating a corrective action for those non-conformities, looking at the potential risks and having an assessment of those risks, that all comes under your proactive approach. In addition to that, I did mention behavior-based safety. So um, that is encouraging your employees to report any hazards, offering them rewards, a point system, um, uh, triggering uh, disciplines, safety-based disciplines through your behavior-based programs, uh, triggering safety trainings, uh, and seamless integration with LMS, your, your learning module, uh, or also feeding this information into your performance and su succession planning. And finally, there is the administrative capability. So if you have multiple locations, we do support uh, language translation. Um, you can do globalization and localization of fields. So if there is any fields that you want to edit from time to time, there's some, uh, a new set of questions that you want to ask in the future, or there's a new business rule uh, or a new policy that needs to be pushed out, you're managing all that through the administrative console. Now, here are some of the reference customers of Sedalis that you can take a look at. Um, uh, we have um, work with University of Concordia, University of Guelph, um, Inland Empire Health Plan, um, HSN, and some of the other customers, as you can see, um, across different industries. So, sorry, skipped a slide here. Now, um, here, um, I'm just going to cover some of the, the key, um, key components when it comes to incident management. Um, so as you can see, we do have dynamic forms. And what I mean by that is um, you have a single point of entry for all the different types of forms that you, you might need to generate. So if I am generating an illness um, report, or maybe it's an injury specific report, or maybe it's um, um, a near miss, all of your incidents will uh, be driven based on the, the selection that I'm making in my screen. So as I make those selections, the remainder of the process flow is triggered by that. The remainder of the questions that are being asked is triggered by that. And um, whether we need to generate OSHA reports from that, whether we need to trigger um, based on the location that I'm accessing this application in, uh, what is the, the regulatory reports that we need to generate? Um, it, do we need to generate any claims processes? All of that is based on the selections that I'm making. So it's a single point of uh, uh, entry. You do not need to have 100 tiles on your screen for every different function. Return to work programs. Um, so as we are um, uh, uh, filing injuries and if, if the employees need to uh, uh, start a claim or, or file for a claim, uh, we do have the ability to um, uh, integrate with the workers' compensation team, give them the ability to generate a letter templates from the tool, pre-built letter templates, uh, which will automatically feed the detail of the employee from, the, from core HR, the basic employee data. And uh, you are able to send out letters right from the tool to those employees for short-term and long-term disability. Also push out any documents which uh, give the employee the detail around what they are eligible to take, um, triggering their return to work plans with modified duties if required, um, again, as I mentioned, it's a fully integrated system. So uh, if you're offering them temporary work, you could do that from the tool as well. And then there's site audits, uh, site evaluations. 
So there's standard checklists. There are different uh, templates of checklists that you can adapt uh, to. So as I mentioned, we use standard technology. So we have pre-built templates. Um, the core uh, business processes are the, the content is there. So you have the ability to pick and choose, uh, strip out elements that are relevant to your organization um, and, and look at how uh, these, these uh, audits and evaluations are performed. Uh, we have different scoring matrix um, that you can use uh, to, to perform these assessments and then finally generate reports uh, which uh, help us um, look at the process level improvements in the future. Here are just some examples of the uh, reports and graphics that we have generated. It's, this is a dashboard report. Uh, the first one that you're looking at here for somebody who's in an executive level position and they just want to quickly glance at some cards um, and just do a geographical analysis of where they're getting most of their incidents from. If they want to switch between graphical and tabular reports, they want to do a cost analysis of the types of claims that they've gotten. Uh, all that information is available right at their fingertips. And here I'm just showing some uh, business results. So um, by implementing an automated health and safety process, you have the ability to improve not just your corrective action plans and that we've seen um, from uh, for our customers an increase in the corrective actions and being able to track uh, your, your closure rate for those corrective actions and uh, trace down any corrective actions that are open. So uh, there's improvements around that, uh, improvements in transparent reporting, as I mentioned, uh, previously with manual processes, information is being lost in translation. So having that information available in real time, and that is why it's important to be able to capture every minute detail within those forms so that you can generate, so that you have a scalable and a robust platform that you can use, you could utilize to generate more and more reports in the future. Having improvement in your company policies, uh, improvement in data integrity and also reducing any costs associated with claims. So here's just an example of a, a customer, a reference customer. Uh, so we did a deployment at University of Concordia um, and they needed the ability to identify any type of violations or um, they needed to look, do quality checks within their school cafeteria, uh, within their classrooms to do safety inspections. Um, also uh, look at any type of violations being performed uh, by the staff um, and being able to report on that information um, and having preventative safety, especially in place uh, for an institution at that scale. Um, and previously this information was all manual. It was being tracked on paper forms and then a person had to take it to a supervisor who then had to take it to the safety team. Um, and again, information is being lost in translation. Uh, your uh, report is, uh, reports are not showing accurate information. So, um, having an automated system allowed them to have operational efficiency um, and uh, give them the ability to also uh, have a collaborative system. So as their employees were uh, going away from work um, and uh, they needed to trigger the return to work plans, uh, the management team was able to have communication through the tool with the employee as their return to work date is approaching, uh, being able to follow up with them and whatever the updates are being made on the employee's file are being uh, updated in real time through ev to everybody, being notified to everybody who is defined within that workflow. So um, having that information there, being able to collaborate with your workers' compensation teams uh, and also having that real time access to reports um, is, is uh, 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 what Concordia University was looking at. Now I'm just going to quickly switch over here just to show you um, how the tool works. Now it is a role-based application. So basically if I am an employee, my access might vary from uh, my supervisor's access. You're, you're, it's just going to be dependent on the day-to-day -day tasks that I perform. Um, so if I'm an employee, I might only have the ability to report an incident, look at my own incidents, maybe look at some of my own trainings, whereas a supervisor might have a different access where they're performing investigations and where they're looking at all of their team's incidents, maybe uh, activating their return to work plan, so on and so forth. 
Um, the applications are device agnostic, as I mentioned. Uh, so you do have the ability to um, trigger, um, you, basically, if you're using an iPad or if you're using a mobile device, the application is just adapting to the size of the screen. Um, and you can see that it works the same way as a desktop um, uh, computer would, would work. So if I'm making these selections, and I mentioned these are dynamic selections, so if I select automobile accident, it asks me all the questions specific to automobile accidents. Um, if I am to select uh, an employee injury, uh, it will ask me questions relevant to that. Um, so I can quickly uh, specify the date of the incident, the time of the incident. Um, I can uh, use any of these um, text boxes. We do have the um, speech to text conversion. Um, so if I want to talk to the system, if I do not want to have to hand type everything from scratch, I have the ability to uh, simply um, speak into the microphone and uh, it will convert my speech to text for me. So that really uh, cuts down the time when it comes to note, -take, note taking. And then also, as I scroll further down, I have the ability to um, select the part of my body which is injured. Um, and as I do those selections, it starts to reflect in the table down below. It works the other way around as well. Um, capturing any type of witness statements, uh, making attachments, and um, all this information that we are capturing, we can also uh, print out into an output form, uh, which will uh, reflect all the detail that we just entered onto the screen um, for printing purposes. Uh, and then finally, all of this information is then uh, the, uh, passed on to the management team. The workflow is all configurable. Um, the, the reports that we generate as a result of these, um, um, uh, these incidents, uh, you can have location-based reports. You can have um, uh, reports uh, using date ranges. So here is an example of a report where I'm looking at high severity incidents or recordable uh, work injury rates. Um, and uh, this one is uh, month specific. Um, and then I can switch between that graphical and tabular report. Uh, you could look at all the injury stats, the injury rate, the different types of injuries that have occurred. So any data that is being captured is reportable. Um, and uh, you, can, uh, you can see that information in this detail. With that, I'm going to sum up um, today's demonstration. Um, and I'm going to take a pause and see if there's any questions. Did we see anything in the chat which I missed? Jennifer or? Hello? Uh, yes, um, I don't see any questions. Okay, so great. That means you did an excellent job, Eska. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Yes, thank you. And as we said, we have recorded this session and all the participants should get a link in a day or two with that information to the recording. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you. Take care.